Well, it's August the 4th, 2023. I appreciate you dropping by for my daily devotions. We're going to look at 2 Corinthians chapter 9, uh, Mark 16, the last chapter in Mark. Start to uh, Luke tomorrow. Uh, I, Psalm 53 and then Malachi 4. We're going to go back and start Genesis tomorrow. Um, just thinking about some of the verses from yesterday. Uh, we looked at uh, Mark chapter 15. Jesus had died on the cross, and they took his body down, and uh, and then they say this. So Joseph, it's Joseph of Arimathea, bought some linen cloth, took down the body, wrapped it in the linen, and placed it in a tomb cut out of rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. It's a, it's amazing how you take just the historical account, and people are still saying, "Oh, we found the shroud of Turin." Okay, today, I don't know if they have or not. I'm not too worried about it, but I know that I have the historical account that Jesus was dead and they wrapped his body in a shroud and then they buried him. He was buried for three days, only, only lasted three days, a temporary burial because he was raised from the dead. Okay, but I just, I've always found it interesting that we're still going on about that a couple thousand years down the road. Um, whether it's was the shroud Jesus was wrapped in, I don't know. Probably not, Just, but does it really matter? No, it doesn't, because he was dead and then raised from the dead. I hope you'll just hang on to that, and now let's pray, and we'll jump into the, the scripture for today. Father, thanks for speaking, for making what you say clear to us. Change our hearts, Father, change our lives, but what we hear you say today in the scripture, and uh, make us different because we heard from you. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, I don't look, well, I don't look good with or without my glasses, but I, th I think I read a little better without them. There is no need, the ninth chapter of 2 Corinthians, there is no need for me to write to you about this service to the saints. He's talking about an offering for the Jew Jewish people in Jerusalem, Christians. For I know your eagerness to help, and I've been boasting about it to the Macedonians, telling them, that since last year in Achaia, you last year you and Achaia were ready to give, and your enthusiasm has stirred most of them to action. But I'm sending the brothers in order that our boasting about you in this matter may not prove hollow, but that you may be ready as I said you would be. For if if any Macedon Macedonians come with me and find you unprepared, we not to say anything about you would be ashamed of having been so confident. So I thought it necessary to urge the brothers to visit you in advance and finish the arrangement for the generous gift you had promised. Then it will be ready as a generous gift, not as one grudgingly given. Remember this, this is important, okay? Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously will also reap generously. And by, by the way, that is the new covenant motivation for giving. It's not tithing. We're not under the old covenant. But when we, when we plant, we harvest giving not only of your monetary stuff but your time and your talent and your treasure as well verse 7 each man should give what he's decided in his heart to give not reluctantly or under compulsion for god loves a cheerful giver and god is able to make all grace abound to you so that in all things at all times having all that you need you will abound in every good work as it is written he has scattered abroad his gifts to the poor and his righteousness endures forever that's psalm 112 verse 9 quoted now, he who supplies seed for the, to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be made rich in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion, and through us your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of God's people, but it is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. You do something that causes people to thank God, man, you're blessed. You know, that's the idea. Because of the service by which you have proved yourselves, men will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ, for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. And in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. And the 16th chapter of Mark. resurrection stuff 
When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb and they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance to the, of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You're looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go tell the disciples and Peter he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. When Jesus rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had driven seven demons. She went and told those <clears throat> who had been with him <clears throat> and who were mourning and weeping. When they heard that Jesus was alive and that she, she had seen him, they did not believe it. Afterward, Jesus appeared in a different form to two of them while they were walking in the country. These returned and reported it to the rest, but they did not believe them either. Later, Jesus appeared to the eleven as they were eating. He rebuked them for their lack of faith and their stubborn refusal to believe those who had seen him after he had risen. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe in my name. They will drive out demons. They will, they will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes in their, in their hands. And when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on sick people and they will get well. And all that stuff happened in the book of Acts. And God can make it happen today if he wants. That's up to him. Uh, but they, that all is recorded in the book of Acts. All those things happened. After the Lord had spoken he, to them, he was taken up into heaven and sat at the right hand of God. Then the disciples went out and preached everywhere that the Lord worked, and the Lord worked with them and confirmed his word by the signs that accompanied it. That's recorded for us in the book of Acts, the things they did. Psalm 53. Another of the Psalms of David. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. You want to prove you're a fool? You could do it. Just decide there's no God. It demonstrates you're, that you're a fool. It, it also demonstrates that you're corrupt. It says this, they are corrupt and their ways are vile. There is no one who does good. God looks down from heaven on the sons of men to see if, if, if there are any who understand, any who seek God. Everyone has turned away. They have together become corrupt. There is no one who does, does good, not even one. Will the evildoers never learn? Those who devour my people as men eat bread and who do not call on God. There they were overwhelmed with dread. Where there was nothing to dread, God scattered the bones of those who attacked you. And he put them to shame, for God despised them. Oh, that salvation for Israel would come out of Zion. When God restores the fortunes of his people, let Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad. Then... Malachi chapter 4. We're going to wrap up book of Malachi, the whole Old Testament today, and then jump into a new run at the Old Testament tomorrow, starting in Genesis. I look forward to Genesis. Love the book of Genesis. The fourth chapter of Malachi, last chapter in the Old Testament. And this is all God had to say until Jesus came, over 400 years with no revelation until Jesus showed up. But they'd said everything that was going to come, so then it came in Jesus. Verse 1 of the fourth chapter. Surely the day is coming. I will burn like a furnace. All the arrogant and every evildoer will be stubble, and that day that is coming will, be, will set them on fire, says the Lord Almighty. Not a root or a branch will be left to them. But for you who revere my name, the Son of Righteousness will rise with healing in his wings, and you will go out and leap like calves released from the stall. Then you will trample down the wicked. They will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day when I do these things, says the Lord Almighty. Remember the law of my servant Moses and the decrees and laws I gave him at Horeb for all Israel. See, I will send you the prophet Elijah before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children, the hearts of the children to their fathers, or else I will come and strike the land with a curse. God has spoken. Thanks for hanging out and listening to the Word of God today. 
Hope you'll do that every day. And I hope you subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell. Give me a thumbs up. Make comments. Leave your prayer requests. I'll put out a prayer video for you. I will talk to you again soon. Have a great day.